Even with zero experience, by the end of this video, you're going to be able to draw a clear floor plan from scratch and create a cool 3D cutaway that you can show off to your friends, family, and colleagues. But if you want to skip the work and just want the ARCHICAD file, I'll have a link down below where you can download it from my Patreon. The best way to learn is to do, so let's get started. We'll start off with a fresh ARCHICAD file using the standard template. We'll click new. Now, before we get too far, there are shortcuts that are gonna make your life so much easier in ARCHICAD. The top ones here are for Windows and the bottom ones are for Mac. I'll be using these throughout the tutorial. So take a screenshot or write them down. They're going to be invaluable and will make you so much quicker with ARCHICAD. To make sure that we're all working in the same interface, we'll go to options, work environment, work environment again. We'll go to work environment profiles, click the architectural profile 25, apply schemes to profile and apply. We'll go okay. And this is gonna rearrange our interface just so everything looks the same. From here, we'll go over to this right hand side and click on the view map. When you hover your mouse over the top of something for a little bit, it'll pop up with a little title. We'll want to double click on ground under the architectural plans. And this is where we're going to draw our floor plan. So let's get started. The measurements on the reference plan are six meters by 7.5 meters. So on our left hand side, we'll go to the wall tool. Oh, I've also got these walls as 250 millimeters thick, which is around standard for brick veneer. Once I've got the wall tool selected, I'll go up to this top toolbar here, and we're going to turn this into a basic wall. We'll click this one here, and we'll change our material to say an aluminium. Now, within the center of the screen, we're just going to click once, and this has started drawing our wall. Now, I'm going to want to draw this clockwise, just as a preference, but if we zoom in, we'll see the top of the walls facing upward. I want the wall to go inward. So to change this, I'll just tap this button here. There we go. So now I'll type in my first measurement by holding in shift is going to make the line parallel. Holding shift in, I'm going to tap tab. Just tap it and now I can enter in my measurement. Let's go 6,000 and we've got our first wall. If you wanna check it out in your shortcuts, just tap F3 if you're on PC and use the equivalent for Mac that we showed in the shortcuts earlier. To look at our wall in 3D, we'll click the middle mouse button or tap with two fingers on a Mac and holding in shift while clicking the middle mouse button, we can orbit around our wall. If we just use our middle mouse button, we can pan around and that's pretty much how we can navigate around in 3D. Very cool stuff. To go back to 2D, we're going to tap F2 or the Mac equivalent and we're going to finish up the outline of our wall. For our next wall, we're just going to hover over our previous wall until a little tick pops up. Then we're going to click in that corner We'll hold down shift, which is going to stop it from going out at a slight angle. We're going to go 7,500, enter. We're going to click again and drag across, holding in shift, click tab once, go 6,000 and click enter. And one more time, back up to the top. And this time I'm just going to click, there we go. And with that, we've got our wall. Let's check it out in 3D, there we go. All right, cool. Back into 2D, checking out our reference plan. Patios are about 1,200 by almost two meters. So let's do this one up here first. Let's make it 2000, 1200 by 2000. For this next bit, I'm going to use a fill just as a guideline for where I'm going to put my walls. So for this, I'll go down to document. I'll hit the fill tool. And from here, I'm going to select this middle geometry method here. This way, I can click on the corner. Once I've got that little tick, drag it down. And I'm just going to tap, tab. I'm going to type in my first measurement, 1200. And to get that second measurement, I'm going to tap, tab a second time and enter in 2000. We'll click enter. This is going to be my little patio. From here, what I can do is I can select my previous wall and use the split tool up the top. I'll select this edge of the fill and click and a little eye will pop up. Now, this eye is going to cut down the portion that I just selected. I'm going to point the eye to the right hand side and it's going to select that side of the wall once I've finished the operation. Excellent. So this wall now has been cut and we can shift this using the shortcut Control D, which is the drag tool. I can click this edge of the wall here, drag it down, 2000. I'll do the same thing for this wall here using the split tool. I'll click on this edge of the wall just here. I'll drag this line along here, then click up. So the wall selected on that side, Control D to drag. I'll bring that just in line with this edge of the fill here. Let's go into our 3D, F3 or the Mac equivalent. And now we've got our first little bit of articulation. Excellent. Let's check out our reference. The other one's gonna be 27 by one meter. Let's do that again. I'm going to type in my dimensions, 2700 by one meter, enter. Now what I could also do is use the eyedropper tool, holding an alt, clicking the wall. And from here, I can select this point just in line with where the fill is. Now I want the wall to be facing the opposite way in this case. So I'll flip the wall, click once, and do one more time for this vertical wall coming down through here. I want to get rid of this wall here so I can just click this little edge node here and just drag it back in line holding in shift with this wall just here. I'll do the same thing 
with this wall just here. I'm just going to click the wall once then click this little node down the bottom and drag it up until it just turns that pen black, holding in shift and click once. And there we go. Let's go into our 3D and we've got our walls and they're coming up quite nicely. Let's go back into 2D. From here, we'll want to draw our little internal stud wall. So let's use the eyedropper tool, holding in alt, selecting our wall. I'm going to make the stud wall about 90 millimeters. So to change the wall width, I can go up to the top here. I can go 90, type in the measurement 90 and enter. And then I can click this point just here and drag, there we go. Next up, let's add some slabs. To add a slab, we'll go to the left-hand side and click the slab tool. From here, we're going to select this option. To draw a slab, it's pretty much the same as a wall. We can just click and drag. Let's go into our 3D and there we go. Now, let's say I just want the slab to go around where the walls are. I'll select the slab by clicking in the middle and I'll just delete it. I'll go to the slab tool. Very cool tool I'm about to share, the magic wand. I learned this like three years in, it's such a powerful tool. If we hold in spacebar, the magic wand will pop up. From here, if we push it over to the edge of the wall, you'll notice that around the perimeter of the wall, a line pops up. If we click and we'll go into our 3D, it's just put a slab underneath where the magic wand has selected the perimeter of the walls. Really quick way of adding a slab to a project. Now, I'll want a slab for where the patios are too. In this case, I can just select the fill and holding in shift, selecting the second fill, then clicking delete using the alt tool to pick up the slab. We'll drag from top down to bottom and we'll do it for this one too. We're starting to take form. Next up, let's put in some windows and doors. We'll go to our floor plan view, click the window tool. And just in the settings up top here, once the windows tool is selected, we're going to click. And in our library, we're going to go down to windows 25. Just go to basic windows. We're gonna scroll on down until we find window 25. From here, we'll click OK. Now, when I drag my mouse over the top of the wall, you'll see this pop up. So this is where we can insert our window into our wall. If I click, then I click facing outward of the wall and I go into my 3D. We've got our first window. I'll go back into 2D. I want this window to be in the middle of the wall. So I'm going to go to this option here, type in 85 and click OK. And that's going to inset the window into the wall. Now, we'll wanna add a couple more windows. So selecting the window tool, we can click and click again, and we've got another window. Now let's say I wanna change the size of the window. Up in the top panel here, we can change the parameters. Let's say I want it 1200 high. So 1.2 meters high by 1.5 meters wide. We'll click enter, there we go, nice. I'll put in another window here and another one over here. I'll select the window, holding in shift, I'll select the other two and I'll insert them into the wall. Next up is our doors. For this, we'll select the door tool. We'll go into the doors. Just in the ARCHICAD library, we'll go to door 25, go to hinged doors. We'll go to hinged doors and we'll scroll on down to door 25. This one just here, we'll click OK and we'll click on our wall. And now, depending on which direction we move our mouse, we can have the door swinging one way or the other. We can change this after the fact quite easily, so don't worry. We're going to click again. Now let's say I wanna change it so it's facing the other way. Using our shortcut, Control M, and clicking once, it's going to mirror that door. Let's undo that in this case. Next up, I'll want some French doors going out onto each of the different patios. I'll select the door tool, go to the settings. And from here, I'm just going to scroll on down until I get to double door 25. I'm going to click, click OK. This time I'll click in this wall here, click inward and same for this one here, click inward. That's all looking pretty good. So we've got our walls, windows, doors and our slab. Let's check out our 3D and it's starting to come together. If we don't want those orangey looking pens, we can go down to the bottom here and select black and white. To me, this looks so much better. And we can do the same thing in floor plan. If we go down to the bottom, click just here, and we'll go to black and white. Oh, so much better, so much better. Now the numbers are handy to be able to tell the dimensions of our different windows and doors, but for the sake of aesthetics, we're going to turn these off for now. To do this, let's select all of our windows first, holding in Alt for the eyedropper tool, we'll select the window. Now if I tap Control A, or select all, it's going to select all the windows. From here, I'm going to go to the settings. With our window settings open, we're going to click on dimension marker and click no marker. We'll click OK, that'll turn those off. Similar process for the doors. We'll use the eyedrop tool, select all, go to our settings. We'll go to our dimension marker. So we've got no marker selected on here. But if we go into this dialog box here, go down to tags and labeling and turn off leaf dimensions and custom text, it'll turn it off for those as well. Excellent, and our plans are starting to take shape. Next up, we'll want to add in couches, beds, a kitchen, and some chairs and tables. Let's start with the kitchen. Let's select the object tool, 
go to the settings dialog in the objects within the search view just here clicking this we can type in kitchen hit enter and we're going to go to kitchen layout 25. now for the shape of the kitchen we're just going to go a little l shape like this and i'll want to turn off pretty much everything except for the sink and for the refrigerator i'll turn those off one last little thing i'll just head across a couple to the right and i'm just going to delete the text here so the fridge is nice and clear let's go okay i'm going to select in this bottom corner here oh now this has popped up our objects for whatever reason are on a hidden layer so for the moment let's go to choose layer down the bottom here this will have what our objects are set to on our layer for the time being let's just put on the archicad layer and we'll go okay we don't need to worry about layers in this tutorial things get pretty deep and we don't really need to worry about them too much for this little project so we've put our kitchen in i'm going to select the rectangle of the kitchen i'm going to click our drag shortcut Control d I'm going to shift this up and across until it lines up with the bottom portion of the our wall We're down here. There we go. Nice. Now it's a little bit long, so I'm just going to pull this in just using the pink little tab. Bring that down. Likewise for this one just here. I'll bring my sink in and across just about center. Now it looks like I've got a couple of extras that snuck their way through. So I'll go back into my settings. I don't really want any tall cabinets, so I'll just go zero and wall cabinets. I'll also go zero. We'll go OK. I want to chuck my refrigerator just in so i'll click in the middle here and just drag it across i'll click our bench again and just drag it down a little bit drag my window just so it's not in behind the fridge and adjust this window too i'll have that in line say i'll tap on the pet palette this drag portion here and i'll just line that up with that part of the bench there i'll shift the fridge up within the pet palette we can select a bunch of different ways to modify an element so i'm just going to this portion of the pet palette and drag the fridge just up Drag that up there as well. Let's go back into our 3D. Ooh, and it's starting to all take shape. Let's go back in. We've got our kitchen pretty much set up. I'll just drag this cabinet in a little bit. Holding shift while I do this. Next up, chair and tables. I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool, select the object, which is kind of select the tool. And I'll just go back to the settings dialog. From here, I'm going to go to table. I'm going to go to round table. I only want four chairs. It's going to automatically change it. And we're just gonna click okay. Click it in the middle of the room and let's say i want to rotate this just so it's not so perpendicular and square i'm going to Control e or the mac equivalent of rotate i'm going to click once click add again this is going to set our two anchors and i'm going to rotate the object just about 45. i want to bring the chairs in so i'll zoom in i'll select this just here and i'll be able to bring those chairs in like that let's go into our 3d have a little look it's coming along next up same thing we'll go to bed I'm going to go to a double bed we'll go okay and click this one just in through here same thing i could use the rotate tool or up the top here i can just type in our measurement for the angle we'll go okay i want this one to be say 90 degrees got me set up that one fits snugly in there next up same thing object for the cat i'll go to this surfer bed just here we'll go okay we'll click in i'll go Control e to rotate select the bottom and the top and holding in shift i'll just click and drag this one Control d drag this one just into the corner here i also want a little coffee table so we'll type in table yeah that coffee table looks good let's go okay and we'll click that one in i'll shift my table just across shift my coffee table a bit let's check it out okay we'll add in our last few objects for the study table i just typed in table sometimes it always doesn't it doesn't always come up so let's try something different study let's try a desk there we go i'll want this desk 25 okay i'll just click down and I'm going to rotate this one so it's 90 degrees. There we go. I'm going Control D to drag it just down to the bottom here. And I'm going to make the desk a little bit wider, clicking and dragging across. There we go. Now, making sure that I've got that node selected. Next up, going to type in chair. Quite like the look of this chair. Let's go OK. I'll click it in. Control D to drag. Bring it down into roughly there. Now, our chair is visually over the top of our desk. So to bring our desk forward over the top of our chair, I'm going to select the desk, right click, display order, bring forward. So that's going to bring it forward in front of the chair. Just a shelf and some plants left to go. Oh, I've got a window. So let's put this window just in here as well. We can adapt and change things just as we go. It takes the pressure off getting everything perfect from the get go. Go back to our object settings. Let's go bookshelf. We'll click this one just here. I only want two shelves for this one. And height wise, maybe about 1200 high. We'll go okay. We'll just type in 90 for angle before we put it in. I'll just drop it in there. I'll drag it in, control D into the edge there. Let's get some plants. Plants are also in the object. So let's go to object tool. 
Let's type in plant. I'm going to go house plant and I'll select this one just here. Put one just over here, one here. Let's get another little smaller one. Let's say this plant here and we're going to place that on our shelf. We can modify things in 3D as well. So if we go to our 3D pan around, and if I zoom in, scrolling with the wheel to zoom in and out, I can select plant and using control D, the drag tool, I can click on the object, holding in shift, lifting it up, across, up that axis while holding shift. I can click and we can shift our objects in 3D. So I'll zoom in, bring this plant down a little bit. I want to make it a bit smaller. So I might grab the top nodes just here and I'll shrink it down just a little bit. Actually, I might even change it to a different kind of plant. I'll go back to this plant here. We'll go OK. We'll go back into our 3D and we're just going to drag this top node down until about there. Yeah, that looks good. And we're going to change our materials later, make everything look more aesthetic. Let's zoom back out, make this one a little bit taller. I'll bring it up, maybe even a little bit more. Yep, that, that looks good. We'll do the same thing for this one just over here. I'll drag that node up. There we go. We can change this again later. Put another one just on top of my table as well, just in the center. It's crazy what a difference landscaping can make to a scene. Two objects left. Let's just put in some books in a cup. Go books. Book cluster, okay. This one's 90 degrees. I'll click that in. I'll select Control D to drag. Drag it into our bookcase. Let's check it out. All right, so we've got that column coming down the middle. I'll just go back into our settings. I'll take out the vertical pane. Let's go, okay. We'll select our book, Control D, and I'll drag those down while holding in Shift, just so it stays vertical and doesn't want to pan around the place. And that's looking pretty good. We'll change the materials of everything again to make everything look aesthetic a little bit later on. Let's go back to 2D. I'll bring these books in just about there and along through here, just so our objects aren't colliding in the 2D plane as well. Now I'll select the books to create a duplicate of these. One of the quick ways is to go Control D, drag. Then while I'm dragging this across, I can tap Control once and we'll notice a little plus button pop. With that plus button, that means a duplicate is being created. Now if I click again, then we keep our original over here, but we have a duplicate over in this space. Now, I'll want to mirror these books so they're facing the other way. So using Control M and clicking the top and clicking the bottom, it's going to mirror it to the other way. I'm going to use Control D, drag this back across. Now, it's disappeared. So it's probably lower in the hierarchy of the view. So what we can do, while holding in shift, then clicking tab, we can select through different elements. We can't seem to find the node. Quick way to get around this, if we select outside and click and drag across, there we are. We can see our little books just here. So if we deselect by pressing escape, then select while that little tick just pops up, we can right click, display order, and bring that to the front. There we go. Last thing is a little cup. Let's go to our object tool and just type in cup, teacup. We'll go OK. We'll just place that one on top of the desk. Again, disappeared. So let's deselect our tool, select over everything. We'll zoom on in. And when that little tick pops up, that gives me the go ahead that the cup's still there. So I'll select it, bring it to front. There we go. So we've got all of our objects. Next up is our 3D cutaway. Let's go into our 3D. We're going to set up our 3D cutaway. To do this, just up in our top toolbar here, we'll see the 3D cutaway or Control Y. Once I have it selected, we'll see these little scissors pop up in the top and bottom and sides of our screen. I'm going to select the top one, drag it down, and we'll start to see that's starting to go through all the different layers of our building. Very cool. To finalize where it's cutting, we'll click again. We'll see this little finalize dialog pop up. We'll click it, and that's set our cut plane. Now it hasn't deleted those bits. It's just hiding those for the moment. Now if we click the 3D cutaway, it's going to show those again. So let's click it back on and we've got our 3D cutaway. But to make everything look aesthetic, we're going to need to start changing all of our different materials. But before that, let's get that cool isometric looking view. To do this, we'll go to view, 3D view options, 3D projection settings. We're going to go to parallel projections within here. We're going to go to here and select this one, isometric. It's going to have all these values typed in here. And if we click OK, everything's probably disappeared. But if we double click the middle mouse button or if we click fit to window in the bottom left hand corner here, our views popped up, excellent. Now, if yours has shown up a little bit different, it's probably because the camera has been set to a different place. So within these settings, we can change where the camera is showing just here. So let's say this is our house here. This is our camera and we can pan to where we want it. So if I select this point here, we'll go OK. Again, fit in window and it's going to show it from another perspective. But we'll change that back to what we had it. We'll go OK, double click, middle mouse button or just click this little button down here for fit in window. Cool. So that we can capture and save this view and don't have to keep on redoing that last step. We can go up to the top of the 3D just here, select out of that. Right click on this top bar here. We'll go save 
has view and we can give it a little custom name just under this name part here we'll click on this tab go custom and we'll type in 3 3d view we'll go create down the bottom right hand corner here we'll see the 3d view pop up now anytime we want to get to this view we can click just down here cool so one of the next fun and really impactful parts of how our whole scene looks which is changing materials. First thing, I'm going to select all my different walls by clicking and holding in shift my external walls, this one here, this one here, and this one here. And I'm going to select on this top right hand corner here. And now if yours isn't showing, you might have to scroll your middle mouse button or pan across if you're using Mac, just up in this top until you get to building materials. For this one, I'm going to select the outside surface so it's turned on and I'm going to go to siding light. There we are. Next up, I'm going to select the slab. I'll go to building materials, turn this top one on, and I'm going to select pine grained horizontal. This kitchen's distracting a little bit, so I'm going to select that. Next, I'm going to go into representation and surfaces. And for the countertop, I'm just going to put it as a titanium white. We'll go OK. For the benches, I'm also going to put those as siding as well. Now, so that I don't have to go into each individual object and change all their surfaces. For these objects, I want all the surfaces to be the same. And the quickest way to do this is up in this dialog just here, I'll go surface override. So I'll click on this dialog just here. Then I'm going to select siding light. There we are, nice timber kind of feel. I'm gonna select the table. I'll do it for this one too, siding light. Now you'll notice on the edges just here that the materials don't wrap around. This is a setting we can change within the walls. Quick way to modify how this looks. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, select the wall, go control A to select all the walls. I'm going to go to the settings and just within the settings here, we're going to go and we're going to click in end surfaces, override adjoining walls. We'll go okay. And that's gonna wrap those corners with the materials. All right, we've made some good progress. Next up, we'll do these slabs. We'll select these two slabs here. I'll change the building materials, the top surface to a brick. Let's go be brick white natural. There we are, nice and classy. Now let's say I wanna have these so that they're stepped down from the original slab. I'll just go to this point here and I'll go minus 50 and that's gonna step them down. But so that it's still in line with the slab, I'll just make it so that this is 200. There we are. Let's give our window some casings to make it a little bit more aesthetic. Using the eyedropper, we'll select a window, control A to select all the windows. Go to our window settings. Within here, we just want to go to casing outside and click once. This is going to give us a casing on the outside. Selecting through these views here, we can get different views of the window. Kind of cool little trick. You can do this for objects as well as windows, doors, everything else. Now let's change the materials so it matches a more of a timber vibe. We'll select the dialog box and go down to model attributes. We'll select pine graded horizontal. Let's also do this for the frames as well. Now with our dialog selected, we'll go to model attributes in here with uniform window surfaces turned on. We'll go to pine grade horizontal. We'll select okay. Hey, there we go. Next up, I'll change this door here. We're going to make this one timber. So we'll go to model attribute. Oh no, we'll just go up to this here and select pine grade horizontal. We'll select okay. Now, what I'll actually do is I'll want this door opening a little bit just so we can see the bed, just gives it that little extra dynamic. So just in under opening type and angle, we're going to select 45, we'll go okay. Hey, there we are, I like that. For the bed, I want the bed head down a little bit lower so people can just jump onto the bed. Real kind of cozy cabin vibe. So I'm gonna pop this one down to 500, we'll go okay. And that lowers that bottom part down there. These pots here, I wanna change their base material. In the pots, I'll go into all parameters. And for the pot, I'm going to select, say, a uh, light gray. Let's go, okay. It distracts a little bit less from everything else. When you have a strong color, it tends to draw attention. Let's do the same thing with our books. We'll turn them to something a little less eye-catching. I'm going to change all the surfaces just here. Go to like a sand beige. Now, as I'm pivoting and panning around, I can always just double click on my 3D view over here and it recenters it. We're getting closer, but I'd like some more soft surfaces within the scene. I'm talking some carpet, so let's add that in. We want the end scene to look like this and we're getting pretty close. So within the 2D, let's select our slab and I'm gonna draw it as a little rug just here. We can use tools in a somewhat unorthodox method to get the results that we want. I'm going to set this as five and that's gonna push that slab up five millimeters. Let's go into 3D and we'll select that slab we just put down. I'll put this to say a carpet. There we go. Now let's create a little bit of carpet for the bedroom. I'll use the eyedropper tool. I'll select the slab we just created. Click this bottom left hand corner here and just up to the top if we go back into our 3D. Now color wise, I think we can do better. So let's go into our surface and I'm actually going to change this surface. 
So if we go to options, element attributes, and then go to surfaces within here, we can go to the carpet we just selected. ArchiCAD's got all sorts of textures that we can use. So if we just go to browse, and I'm gonna scroll on down till we say get to, yeah, I like this light gray. So let's go, okay. I'm gonna change surface color here, just so it's easy to identify. Okay, there we are. Eh, it's not bad, but I think we can still do better. So let's just go back in. Yeah, I reckon it's gray just here. Let's go, okay. Yeah, that's looking good. I'm gonna create another custom texture. Let's go up to our surfaces. I'm going to go to the carpet three. This time I'm going to create a new one. I'm gonna call it carpet four after hitting new and I'm gonna make it a duplicate and we'll go okay. And from here, I'm going to select our texture. This time I'll go to a lighter gray. I'll go okay, okay. And I'll wanna change this chair. So it's got that fabric kind of feel about it, but different to our carpets. Clicks or overrides and then we'll select our material to carpet four. Yeah, nice. Might do the same thing for this bed head here. Give it the kind of plush feel as well. So within its settings in representation, I'm just going to scroll on down till we get to the surfaces. I'll select this textile and I'll bring it just to this carpet four here and we'll go okay. Hmm, it's turned out a bit more green than I anticipated. So let's go back in. Let's go to our surfaces. Might go to this gray here, click okay, and okay again. Yeah, all right, I like the look of that. Still enough contrast, yeah, it looks good. Also gonna make the couch the same one as well. So I'll go to carpet four. Now to create a bit more contrast within the scene, make things a little bit clearer. I'll select all the walls and for the materials for the inside face, I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to select it to this paint color just here, which is like a bit of a cream color. I'll select this wall again. This time I'll select the outside portion as well and I'll just select that to the paint as well. So that's got our internal walls. Now that cut slice that we see, that we set up a little bit earlier, we can change what this looks like. If we go up to our 3D cutaway, select this little down button and go to filter and cut elements in 3D. We can go to custom and I'll select this to that same paint that we selected and we'll go okay. But that line, I'm not so sold on. Let's go back into our settings and we're also going to change this. So this is also black for the pen. So we'll go okay, Phew, a lot better. Now the fridge is merging with this wall here. Not a big fan of that. So let's grab our kitchen, control D and we'll drag this across one millimeter just so it's not combining with the wall. Let's go back out. Yep, all right, that looks better. With the pine, let's take it to that next bit of a level. The pine is a little bit dark so I can modify it, its attributes. I'll go to options, element attributes. I'll go to surfaces. I'll go to pine horizontal. And within here, I'm going to bump up the diffuse a little bit. We'll notice just on this here, as we change our ambient and our, and our diffuse, it's going to change how that material looks. Bring those up a little bit. We'll click okay. There we are. Kind of makes all those colors pop just a little bit more. Just notice my books are sunken into the table. So I'm gonna bring those up, select them, then control D. Then I'll just line it up with that node there. Ah, now it hasn't saved what I've just set up there before. When I've double clicked, that top surface has changed back to what it was. So to make sure this saves next time, let's go to filter 3D cut options. We'll go to custom, we'll select our pen and we'll select our material again to what we had it. We'll go okay. We'll right click the 3D view and redefine it with current window setting. That way it's gonna save it for next time when we double click, we pan around, we double click. It's going to show the same thing. Cross checking against our reference material, we're getting pretty close. Next thing is the shadows. Let's set those up. Oh, before we go too much further, don't forget to save your file. It's tragic when you lose all your progress because you didn't save. So please save. So let's set up those shadows. 3D view options, 3D view settings. Now on the source material, I've got the shadows so that they're roughly sitting here. And I've got the altitude a little bit different. So if I just click within here, then backspace and type in 60 and also set the azimuth at 90, we'll go okay. There we go, the shadows are looking pretty cool. Again, you'll want to redefine the current window settings just so that if we click out and click back in, all our settings are set up how we've just put them together. We'll click save. So we've got our floor plan and we've got a suite 3D. Next, we'll want to display them on a fresh page. To do this, we'll click up top right hand here, go to layout book. I'm gonna minimize all these other folders. I'll right click up top here and click new layout. I'm going to call this one layout A3 cabin final. You can call it anything though. We'll go create. Now this page here is massive. I'll want to bring it back down to say something like an A3. So we've got our master pages down here. So if I go click down here while I'm in the layout book, this will have our 3D page. It's got a title block. I don't really need that in my case. So I'm going to select everything and delete it. And for the extra little touch, I'm going to bring in a cardboard texture that I put together in Photoshop. Bring this across, drag this across. I'll go back into my layout. Now nothing's changed. 
If I right click and then go to layout settings and go into 3D cover page, the one we just edited and go, okay, there we go. We've got that set up. Now to bring our drawings into the page that we've just set up, we'll want to project chooser. We'll go to show organizer. From here, we're going to select the view map down the bottom. We'll scroll on down until we get to our 3D view. We're going to click and drag this in. Hey, there we go. So I've got our 3D in. I'm going to rescale this, control K, click OK. And I'm going to click this left-hand side, the right-hand side, and draw it in so it's a little bit smaller. There we go. Just a nice visual way of being able to change the scale of the drawing or the 3D, if scale doesn't need to be completely accurate. So I'll bring this back down. Now we've got that blue background there at the moment. To change this, let's go into our 3D view. We'll go to view and we'll go to 3D styles. Within here, I want to change this so that it's white. We'll go OK. I've currently got mine set at detailed shading with shadows. And then we'll go OK. And that just sets everything back to white. All right, let's shift our publisher just out of the way a little bit. We'll go back into our plan. Now, nothing's changed here at the moment. And we're just back in the layout book. We're going to select the 3D, right click and click update. There we go. That's updated there now. Let's also bring in our floor plan. So if we scroll back up to the top and scroll on down until we find say ground floor here, which we first started in, we can click and drag this onto our page. There we go. So we've got our floor plan. Let's drag this just down to here because scale doesn't matter in this particular project. I'm going to scale it up so it's a bit bigger. Let's say 200%. So just up in this top portion here, type in 200. There we go, that's pretty cool. I'll click Control D to be able to shift it around in my view. Control D, I'll shut down. Now, I don't want all these markers to be showing as well. So I'm going to select the view, click on the edge, and within the pet palette, I'll wanna make sure I've got offset edge selected and I'll bring this one in. Do the same for the other edges as well. Select this one, bring it in, one here, bring it in. I don't want these drawing titles, so I'll select both drawings. I'll up in this top here, I'll scroll across until I find linear drawing title and go no title. Now let's say we're not such a big fan of the blue. Let's go back into our 3D. We can delete this background. And let's chuck in say more beige background and drag this back up in our master layout. We'll go back to our page. All right, that's looking pretty cool. Let's go to our fill tool. So we can see our floor plan a little bit better. At the moment, I've currently got the background set as transparent. Usually it will look like this, but with transparent background set on, we'll be able to see through it. Let's say I wanna put a 75% fill so we can still see a little bit of that textured background come through. I can go to 75% while I've got the fill tool selected. I'll select white and I'll make sure that I've got transparent selected this below portion here. Click on the bottom left up to the top right. From here, I'll select that fill, right click and display order, send it back. There we go. So floor plan is pretty much done. Next up, we're going to tidy up our 3D. I'll just pull up the reference material. We'll put in the titles, give it a nice edge around the outside and that'll pretty much have it sorted. So let's go back in. One other thing in the reference that I've just noticed is our pens and our walls. We've got those set up a little bit differently. So let's just fix those up now. Let's go back into our 2D open source view. At the moment, we've got the standard aluminium for our material. So let's change this. We'll go to our black and white pen, just so it looks better. We'll go through to element attributes and we'll go building materials. We've got aluminium selected. When you've got it selected in the view and then go to these options, it'll have that selected, which is very handy. Within here, I'm going to change it from this gray to a black and we'll select okay. And that's going to change our material. So all the walls are black. This is high contrast, makes it really stark and easy to read. For all the other elements, what I'm going to want to do is set up another pen. So within our pens, I'm going to go pen colors. I'm using black and white for our pens at the moment. I'm going to create a new set. To do this, I'm just going to double click this here. I'll bring this up to a bit of a lighter gray. We'll go OK. And that's created a custom set. Now I want to store this as. I'm going to delete that copy part and just go dash two. We'll go store. And that's created a new pen set. So this one here is all black. And this one has got a little gray. So I'll go OK. I'll set my pens so it's the number two. Yep. I'll select all my doors. I'll go up to the top floor plan and section. I'll select all these checkboxes here and select them to these grays. Let's turn them gray. Let's do the same thing for all the objects. Floor plan and section, we'll select just here. We'll turn these to the grays. And last but not least, the windows. Let's go floor plan and section, select and turn those as well to gray. That's tidied up our floor plan a little bit. Let's go back in too. Now at the moment, if we zoom in, we'll notice that it's still showing as black. So what we wanna do is select our floor plan and make sure that the pen is set at the top here to, to this one that we just set up. There we go. It's got that gray and it kind of gives layers to the pens that we've set up. From here, 
we're going to tidy up the 3D. At the moment, it's a little bit low resolution. So let's just go into our 3D, open the source view. To increase the resolution of our 3D, I'm just going to double click the 3D view, make sure we've got this selected. We'll go up to our 3D and set window size. Within this dialog, I'm just going to link these two values and bump it up to 4K. We'll click OK. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. This window that we've got is larger than what ArchiCAD can show on our screen. So we kind of have to guess where that bottom portion of the drawing is because it's hard and we can't bump it up to the top. So I'm going to zoom in, pan, and then I'm going to right click and redefine with current window settings. I'm going to go into the layout. I'm going to right click on here and update. And this is going to increase the size of the drawing as well as the resolution. So when we zoom in, it's clearer than it was before. Handy little trick to draw the view out just by grabbing those edges. All right, from here, we want to get rid of all the white. But if we select it and we try and go transparent like we did for the floor plan, we'll notice these nasty little edges here. So we'll turn that back off. And that's to do with the 3D render engine, but that's going into too much specifics there at the moment. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to change by selecting in the middle of these points here. I'm going to select just here, bring this one down, just in line with the wall, select move node in the pet palette here, so this edge, bring it out. I'll just do this for the rest of the drawing, just so that we get rid of that white. Now, just after this, we're going to put a nice thick line around the outside, which is really going to make this 3D pop. Just drag this in here. Two last points left to go. This one here, this one, and that one. Let's select our 3D, drag it in and across. Control K to resize, we'll select OK. We're going to do it visually. We'll select one point and the other. We'll just drag that in. Control D to drag it up. We'll make, make it a little bit smaller to about there. Select it, Control D, bring that one up. Now, to make the 3D pop, we'll go to the polyline tool. Holding in the magic wand, we'll hit spacebar and select around the view. There we go. That's given it a little bit of an outline, but we want to make it big and really pop. So again, we're going to go into our pen set, go to pens, and within the pen set that we set up, I'm going to change this last pen here. Yep, that's black. I'm going to change this pen here. So the weight is 1.25. We'll go OK. We'll select this pen here and I'm going to drag it all the way across just to point here. There we go. Giving it that nice thick outline. We're getting pretty close to our original drawing. Let's minimize that. From here, we want to put in a couple of different labels. I'm just going to copy, copy these ones across, drag these into place. So for the text, we're just going to use the text tool, double click, and then we can start typing in our text here. Now for this specific text, I'll select it. I've used Baskerville Old Face and a pen size of five. So I can change these settings up here. If I just tap B, that'll bring me to about here. I'll just go Baskerville Old Face. Then I can increase that up to five, type in five, enter, and then yeah. Oh, I also want to change the pen color so that is white. So I just, oh, and if you want this ArchiCAD project file or any of my other ArchiCAD project files, make sure to check out the Patreon page, which I'll link down below in the description. It's where I put all my ArchiCAD files, adding new ones with each tutorial. Project files save a massive amount of time and setup. I can't recommend them highly enough, especially if you want to skip the legwork, like I wish I could have when I first started.